Hey guys, it's Matt here, and today we'll be reviewing Windows 11 on an unsupported machine. So here is Windows 11. It's running perfectly fine, and you can actually see, I'll move the chair just a little bit, you can see it's running on an HP Compaq DC5700. This computer actually did not officially support Windows 11 to begin with. I actually had to do a CPU upgrade. What was originally in here was a Pentium 4 of some kind. However, even though the Pentium 4 is a 64-bit CPU and should theoretically meet the requirements of even Windows 8, it won't run Windows 8 on a Pentium 4. You can run the 32-bit version, but the 64-bit version will not boot. Yeah, older Pentium 4s cannot run any newer version of Windows that's 64-bit unless it's like Windows 7. So with this CPU upgrade, I actually now have Windows 11 running perfectly on this computer. I've got all the drivers set up, I've got everything set up that needs to be set up. You even have the graphics driver out of the box. The only thing I needed to install was the sound driver, and even then, these speakers still worked. It was just the internal speaker on the front of the case that did not work, and I needed a custom driver for it. So it was already very compatible to begin with. Now with Windows 11, you can actually see it is fairly responsive. Even on a spinning disk drive, I can open up like settings, it comes up instantly. That app was not open, by the way, to begin with. And you can see I can click around in here. It's a bit slow, but it does work. One thing that you might notice immediately, though, is that there's no transparency. That's because of the driver. I actually am planning on putting in a different graphics card in here, and for a different reason than you might think. So far, honestly, this computer is working perfectly with Windows 11. There's no issues. Even though this computer is completely unsupported, it doesn't have a new enough CPU. It's a Core 2 Duo. It has no secure boot, which is which breaks that requirement. It has a TPM, though. It's a TPM 1.2, which Windows 11, up until very recently, required a 2.0, but then Microsoft kind of realized all the backlash and calm down some of the requirements. So this computer actually might be a completely supported machine once Windows 11 actually comes out. I don't think so though. I'm pretty sure that I'll need to do an upgrade, like do a manual install. I don't exactly remember what Microsoft said you need to do. But running this here, like if I open up the Microsoft Store, that came up instantly. If I open up like Notepad, which is not a hard application to open, that opens fine. You can see this is kind of, there's not really any tearing. I mean, there probably is a little bit that I can't see, but it's very choppy. Uh, that's just due to the driver. I have a feeling if I open up like the store, it'd be quite screen teary. No, that's actually not, there's no tearing. It's quite laggy though, but there is no tearing. And you can see here because of the broken driver, the search icon kind of doesn't look very good. It's just a circle. Don't know why I did that, but that's just why I don't, I, I honestly don't know why I did that. So why did Microsoft stop supporting these older machines? This computer very well is completely supported with running Windows 10. Now, the reason why I think this is the case, and I've actually seen quite a bit of things online, the reason why they require eighth gen CPUs and TPMs on this is due to security. Microsoft seems to be betting on a lot of security features that were baked into 8th gen i-series processors and 2nd gen Ryzen processors. They were betting on that to run Windows 11. However, people didn't understand that. Microsoft never told anybody that. I actually don't even know if they've still officially said anything about it. It's just, I think it might be speculation. But they cut off these systems, and even though they're completely capable of running it, just because they don't have a certain security feature means that they can't run it. Now they actually, this is not the first time Microsoft has done this, but they did this on quite a smaller scale by requiring a feature on a processor known as NX. NX is a feature that most CPUs nowadays have. You'd really wouldn't want to run Windows 10 on on a system that wouldn't support NX anyways because the CPUs would be that old, but it's an arbitrary limitation anyways that shouldn't be a requirement to run Windows because NX is only really, it's called no execute. It's a virus protection thing, but technically speaking should not be a requirement to boot Windows. But my Sony VAIO system that I've got back there, it's not on camera, but it is behind the camera. That has a Pentium 4 CPU, it's a 32-bit CPU, but it can't run Windows 10 because it doesn't have NX. Now, the computer's really old anyways. I didn't think you'd want to run Windows 10 on a system that age anyways, so it's really kind of a moot point. But yeah, Microsoft kind of did the same thing here, but with a much, much, much larger scale. Now, how is this computer when just running basic applications? So let's do alarms and clock, let's just say. That's a very simple, oh. Well, uh, let's try paint, for instance. These are very basic applications. It's just MS Paint. Works perfectly fine. I can draw scribbles here, I guess. That has no issues. What about just going onto Google Chrome and browsing the internet? Now you can see this is where the system actually starts to chug, and that's actually not to do with the computer itself. That's because this does not have an SSD. I have a one terabyte hard drive in here, which honestly isn't terrible. It's not great, but with 
8 gigs of RAM, it's able to run stuff directly and throw it not really into the page file until you really throw a bunch of stuff on here. So let's just say I want to go to YouTube. I haven't actually signed into anything on here, so this is going to be interesting to see. Oh wait, no, I am signed in. I just realized I have my Google account here. Yeah, that works fine. There's no issues there. If I click on a video, so you can see, I'll full screen this here, and it's running in 1080p, it's auto. It doesn't really look like 1080p though, I think it's still trying to render it. This actually runs fine, there's no issues here. It's not the most smooth, it's still chugging a little bit, but I mean it's a Core 2 Duo CPU, it's usually able to handle this stuff. I have Core 2 Duo MacBooks that can do this just fine, so I'm not at all surprised that this works. But this is totally usable, there's no issues with this, and this isn't even a 1080p monitor, so there's not not really fully utilizing that anyways. Since this does not have an SSD, this is not going to really do the hardware inside this thing justice, because the hard drive is actually holding the system back. I don't have any spare SSDs right now. So if we open up, like let's just say the clock here, that's fine, there's no issues here. Uh, that came up pretty quickly. Again, it's kind of laggy because of the drivers that I have and the internal chipset. I think it's just like a GMA 950 or something like that. Windows 7 supports like full transparency and all that, but they cut that in like Windows 10. These older systems can't actually run the blur effects that Windows 10 and Windows 11 use. I don't exactly know what the reasoning behind that was, but considering the fact it's already kind of choppy when opening these, I can kind of see why they did that because it probably did help with performance. Even though I do have transparency turned on, it is ignored because it's disabled. No hardware, there's no issues with hardware. If I were to open up like the, de oopsies, the device manager, I can't type, but it still picked it up. If I were to open like the device manager, you could see here, there are no driver issues. You can see no issues with anything here, no driver conflicts, no nothing, everything works. So yeah, obviously since this is just a Core 2 Duo system, it's not really going to fare well in like benchmarks and other things. It still is completely all right for a lot of basic usages. Why don't we do some kind of like a benchmark, quote unquote, on this system, just to show that even though Windows 11 runs fine, just to prove how not powerful of a computer this is, we're gonna try to run a game that I play on Discord a decent bit. It is called Uno, if I can get this thing to open. So we're going to be trying to run a game that shouldn't be all that difficult to run on this computer. I actually already have it installed because I was testing it a while ago. Uno, this is kind of a meme in a Discord server that I play it in, uh, but we'll just show you how not so powerful this computer is. It really is not a powerful computer by any means. And there you go. That's how bad that this thing runs just the menu. Like, that's not, that's not good. I'm not going to finish a game, but I'll just hop into one just to show you how bad this computer is. If I do online, by the way, this computer is so laggy that it actually will kick me out of one, so I can't actually do that. So we're just gonna do a single player. That's just, that just goes to show how slow this computer is. Well, I don't know how much footage I just lost there because my camera decided to quit recording as I was trying to do this, and of course I got plus forward. You can see this doesn't render right. But yeah, you can see this just runs bad. This doesn't run good, and honestly, I'm not really willing to finish this game, so we're gonna alt F4 out of that. This computer is still perfectly capable of running Windows 11. Even though it doesn't run games and stuff that good, it still runs the operating system perfectly fine. So that's kind of interesting that it does that. But And finally, just for the end of the video, let's actually just do a boot up test. I'm not going to start the boot up timer, until I actually select the option in the boot menu because I actually do have Mac OS installed on this computer. You will see a future video on that. That's actually why I have a Mac keyboard connected. You can't see it, but, and start. So I was a bit late on stopping it, so just subtract like a second off of this, but you can see a minute and seven seconds, which around a minute and six probably. It's fine, I don't know why it just showed the desktop there, I'm not logged in, but it's fine. And now it just broke. <laughs> Would I recommend you use a computer like this on Windows 11? Of course not. I think a Core 2 Duo with Windows 11 is fine, but the graphics that are in here surely are not, and I would suggest that you get a better graphics card. And this computer, of course, loves to be a pain, and it actually doesn't have a dedicated graphics card. Like, it doesn't have a PCIe X16 slot. It has some slot called the ADD2 slot which looks exactly the same as PCIe X16, but it doesn't work with anything that's PCIe X16. It has a PCIe X1 slot, which you can use for graphics, 
and that's actually what I'm planning on doing. I bought a GT710 that is compatible with the X1 slot that will hopefully get Mac OS working correctly because right now it doesn't have any graphics acceleration because the internal graphics that are in here are not supported on El Capitan. I think they work on like Lion and possibly even Mountain Lion, but it, El Cap it does not work on and they're not very powerful graphics anyways. So, but yeah, this computer, perfectly fine, perfectly usable on Windows 11. It's slow. Not that slow, but it's it's okay. If you had to use a computer like this, you very well could. You'd probably be quite frustrated at a lot of points, but you could at least use it. It's not like the system doesn't boot Windows 11. Like Microsoft says, it's unsupported. It's very well working on here just fine. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, then hit the like button. Get subscribed if you like the content that you see on this channel. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys all later. Bye.